All right, here we are. It's uh, January 4th now, 2022. Um, deer season's been over for a while now. Um, I'm on Christmas break right now from college, so I uh, finally got some time to really dig into some of these videos and, uh, um, you know, start editing some more and uh, put some more out there for everybody to see. Um, I definitely got um, some pretty cool videos coming up uh, that were super fun, and uh, I was lucky enough to be able to shoot uh, my buck pretty early, so I was able to film my cousins a lot. Um, and, uh, you know, we were able to get some pretty cool stuff. So uh, I'm really excited to uh, finish these uh, videos up and uh, get them out to you guys. Um, but the reason I'm here is uh, kind of the same reason I did the whole talkie thing in the first video. Um, there was just a lot of stuff that I felt like I kind of missed. And so I'd like to kind of, you know, kind of narrate the uh, the story uh, along with uh, the video and the video clips and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to kind of uh, tell the story as the videos go. And, uh, yeah, it should be a good time. It should be fun. So, um, stick with us and, uh, we're going to get right into it. All right. So gun season 2021. Um, I was super excited for this, this year's gun season. Uh, I hadn't been up hunting very much, uh, just cause I had tagged out so early with, uh, um, with my buck. And, uh, so there was about a month straight that, um, I hadn't been hunting up there. Uh, my dad had hunted up, hunted up there a couple times, but, uh, the pressure was definitely a lot lower than what it was in years past. So I was really excited to um, uh, see what the deer movement was going to be like this year. Um, uh, starting off, uh, um, opening morning, we saw one small buck. And then opening night, we saw a couple does, um, uh, nubbin, or actually just a nubbin buck. And then uh, a pretty mature doe. Um, it was pretty funny. You can see in the video, she walks right by one of our stands and she's just looking that thing up and down. <laughs> I think she's uh, been around the block a couple times. And so it was pretty cool to see her kind of interact with that. Um, obviously nobody was in that stand, but uh, she still kind of knew it was up. Uh, so I think that was a pretty old mature doe. Um, I went in there thinking that I was going to shoot a doe, um, but she just didn't really quite give me the, the shot that I wanted or uh, was willing to take. And it was just, you know, I didn't really want to shoot her when she had that, uh, that buck fawn with her. And, uh, later in the week I think that uh, I think it kind of paid off so um, yeah um, so the next couple days were pretty slow um, that next morning I saw the same uh, same nubbin buck again but no dough no no dough with them um, so I in my mind I was kind of thought maybe she's hot again I don't know uh, maybe she's back in heat and I was hoping that that was the case and um, so I didn't see anything for like the next two days, like not even a single deer. There was one, one morning when I was walking in where I saw a, a looked like a small deer in kind of the same area that, uh, that doe and the buck fawn were. And, uh, in my mind, I kind of thought maybe that was that same, same fawn. And once again, without the, without the doe. Um, so I was just kind of, maybe it kind of reassured myself that maybe, maybe that doe is hot again. So um the Tuesday night Tuesday night then I saw a decent uh two and a half year old buck I passed him he came by at about 15 yards I'm hoping that he makes it through I think that's going to be a really beautiful buck next year so um it was cool to see that and uh cool to see that there's a uh, young deer around and that same deer actually dad passed him probably two or three times throughout gun season as well
So up until Thanksgiving, it was pretty slow. Definitely slower than years past, and I was kind of surprised by that. I thought for sure, you know, deer would be kind of all over just because we hadn't been up there too much. But um, anyways, uh, Thursday Thanksgiving morning, I woke up to a bunch of pictures on the trail camera. And the trail cameras had kind of been dead too, so I was, you know, pretty excited to see that. And um, I was really excited when I opened up the pictures and I saw that there was a really big buck uh, chasing a doe on the camera. And then um, about two, three hours later, uh, there was another really nice 10-pointer that was up there as well. Um, so I knew that there was deer in the area and I suspected that there was a hot doe and I don't know if I'm crazy or not, but, um, just the fact that that doe was with that fawn so hard earlier during the gun season. And then I saw that, that doe fawn or that buck fawn by himself so much. Um, in my mind, I kind of think that that mature doe that was kind of inspecting the stand and stuff like that was the one that went into heat. Um, I don't know, call me crazy and stuff like that, but, um, that's just kind of what I suspect. Um. But anyways, so I obviously didn't hunt Thanksgiving morning. I was just spending time with family and stuff like that. But I got to the woods around probably 1 o'clock, got into the stand, hadn't seen anything. Um, and it was kind of funny because about an hour before daylight, I hadn't even shot an intro yet, but it just felt so good. It just felt like such a good night. Um, I'm like, I better just shoot an intro quick just in case something happens. And so I do the intro quick, and then, um, yeah, I'll let the video show the rest. Thanksgiving, everybody. It's uh, November 25th. Um, we're up here on, on the farm again. Uh, had a couple of nice bucks show up last night. I think there's a hot dog in the area, so. Hoping to get on uh, one of these two bucks. Um, the one is really big, really nice, and the other one's kind of like the one I shot earlier, so I'm not sure if I'll shoot them, but it'll be kind of a game time decision. So of course this doe comes out and uh, in my mind I just, you know, I was, you know, just, you know, thinking, wishful thinking that, you know, maybe she's the one in heat and maybe there's a buck with her and sure enough, um, the smaller of the two bucks was right behind her and, uh, you know, she, he, she kind of came by pretty close, probably about 80 yards and the buck that was behind her just never really, he never really committed to the doe and if he would have, it would have been a lot easier shot and he just kind of kept veering away, veering away and he got to probably... I don't know, probably 185 yards in the wide open field, just sitting there eating. I'm like, all right, I'm going to try and put a good shot on him. I'm just going to take my time. And so I pulled up on him and right away I was, um, you know, he looked kind of far away in the, in the scope. And so I just pulled off. I took a deep breath, zoomed in, got right back on his shoulder. Um, at this point I had the camera on him. Unfortunately, he walked out of the camera frame, um, right as I was about to shoot. Um, but I felt super confident. I was I had a rest and I was right on him. I uh, I put it right on his shoulder, took two deep breaths, pulled the trigger, and uh, he hit the ground like a sack of potatoes. And uh... He was there uh, kind of going crazy on the ground and I thought for sure that I got him you know the instincts kind of kick in and you're like oh wow I just I just shot probably the biggest buck of my entire life and he's laying right there and uh, so he was kind of going crazy and I kind of thought that he was slowly dying and um, I, he kind of stopped moving for a little bit I pulled my binos up and he's sitting there and his head's just you know kind of looking around and uh, I'm like oh crap like I should probably um, you know try and put another put another round in them and at this point you know I'm, I have so many emotions going through my mind I'm you know I thought I had killed this buck and then he's not dead and stuff like that so I was really kind of freaking out so I pulled up shot missed like 10 feet over his head and he's still going crazy on the ground right there so at this point I'm like well I'm just gonna get down and uh you know try and get closer to try and uh you know kind of put him out of his misery and I'm walking up there I'm kind of going real slow and I'm about ready to pull my gun up and uh, he gets up and runs away 
and he's running kind of, he was kind of working his way to get in between me and my dad. So I kind of had to pull up and shoot quick and I know I missed him, but I was just in shock. I couldn't believe it. I had never seen anything like it before. And, uh, you know, you'll see on the video here, you know, it looks like he's, he's dying and that's what I thought. Um, but anyways, I walk up to, uh, where he went into the woods. There's no blood. There's nothing. I couldn't find a single thing. And so I was just, you know, like I said before, there's so many emotions going through my mind at that time. And I, uh, yeah, I just didn't really know what to think. So went back, called a bunch of, I called my uncle, called a bunch of my buddies and, you know, everybody just had the same, the same, uh, you know, the same idea that he would probably just be laying there. It all stiffened up and he'd probably just be laying right where he went in and I'd probably just missed where, where he was. Um, but anyways, uh, the next morning I decided that, you know, we're going to get a pretty big crew. We're going to, uh, you know, just walk the woods and see what we can find. I went right to where he went in and once again, no blood. And we ended up watching, walking every single acre that we could possible. And we did not find a single bed. We did not find anything. Uh, so never even kicked out a deer. Um, so yeah, it was a huge bummer. I, uh, wasn't really sure what to think. So I just, you know, in a last ditch, last, last ditch effort, I called a, uh, dog tracker and, uh, I got on the phone with him and, uh, sent him the video, told him the entire story. And, um, he told me that it looks to be like it was a, uh, spinal shock. Um, you know, it's, uh, everybody's a hunter here and everybody probably knows that there's dead zones on a deer's body where if you, you know, hit it with an arrow, it'll go right through it and, uh, you know, it'll live and it'll be just fine. Um, and he told me that it basically I did the same thing, but since, uh, I shot him with a 270, um, the force of it was hard enough to kind of, um, get up into his spinal nerves and stuff like that. And it basically just put him, paralyzed him for, you know, two to three minutes. And, uh, um, and that that deer will be, be good to go. Um, uh, he said that there's a 98% chance that that deer is going to live. And, uh, so yeah, it was a pretty interesting deal. Um, I had never seen anything like that, but it just goes to show that, you know, these deer are tough and you really got to take your time and, um, but yeah, it's all part of it. It's all part of the chase and I'm hoping that next year I get to get another crack at him cause he was a beautiful buck and you know, he's probably going to be a lot, lot bigger next year. So, so yeah, it was kind of a bummer, kind of a tough way to end the season, but that's hunting. That's why we do it. Um, uh, you know, it kind of makes it fun and stuff like that. So I'm hoping that, uh, hoping that everything works out. And like I said before, I hope that, uh, he comes back and I can see him, see him again. So that's the story of my gun season. So thank you for listening. If you made it this far, appreciate it. Uh, make sure you like the video, subscribe, share it to all your friends. Uh, yeah, thank you.